G'day and welcome to my shop. In this video I want to take you through the techniques and some of the construction methods for making your own DIY spot welder. Now I researched this on YouTube before I started this build and the techniques for rewinding a microwave oven transformer are well and truly documented on dozens of YouTube videos. What I did that might be a little bit different is I constructed most of this using casting techniques and also just steel fabrication techniques. So what I want to do is uh, show you some of the methods that I use, especially for creating the patterns for the aluminium castings, because I did all my research on metal casting over at Myford Boys channel on YouTube. And I'll put the link for that in the description below. And he's truly an amazing craftsman. Uh, everything I wanted to know I found out there. But his method for creating patterns is usually using timber. Um, I already own a 3D printer and I usually model any of these builds beforehand using a 3D CAD package just to verify uh, the construction method and to make sure everything fits. So because I already have the 3D models of these individual parts, I modify those using my CAD package to turn them into patterns, which obviously have to be oversized. They also need to include machining allowances and draft. And uh, if they're split patterns, you can generate those as 3D models and then 3D print the patterns. So I want to show you how that works. The welder itself incorporates an over-center mechanism for clamping the electrodes together. Uh, this is uh, a common technique used in small portable spot welders. The, um, the other thing if you're interested in learning about spot welding is to have a look at Dan Gelbart's channel on YouTube. I'll also put the description for that in the, the uh, or sorry, the link in the description below. Uh, also an amazing craftsman and uh, not just about uh, spot welding, he has lots of videos there about uh, unusual methods of, of manufacturing. The, um, this finished spot welder uh, it, it works, it's obviously underpowered compared to a commercially available one, but let's face it, it was fun to build and at the end uh, it's nice to look at and uh, it's shiny so that's a good thing. It does incorporate a digital timer for um, uh, timing the weld duration and uh, it's basically constructed out of uh, a lot of salvage parts. So there's a DC cooling fan in the back here from an old PC which I scrapped there's a obviously the transformer itself from a scrap microwave oven. There's a DC power supply inside, 24 volts. Uh, I bought that for two dollars at a second-hand shop. And the rest of the hardware I had lying around. Probably the most expensive part were the copper arms. I had to buy those, and they were about uh, thirty dollars each. Uh, the timer on eBay, I, I think about twenty-four dollars. And other than that, it's pretty much whatever I had lying around. So let's have a look at the design method for the castings and we'll have a look at the, or at least the assembly and then we'll have a look at the welding at the end. Okay so what I want to do here is just simply take you through the process that I use for creating a pattern, a 3D printed pattern from a model that I already have uh, created in my CAD package. Here's one that I prepared earlier and you can see that it's actually an assembly. This is the casting, no sorry, this is the original part and it has all of the features that I would use to manufacture this part after the casting is created. So it's got some 8mm holes in the base, it's got a hole through for the arm, there's a hole uh, through here for the, the, clamp lead, uh, the clamp pads. It has all the fillets and all of the, the uh, finished form that I want in that part. Okay, here's the, the actual pattern and as you can see it's only half of the form that I start with and underneath you can see that there are a pair of 6mm holes. Uh, these will have either a, a dowel pin in it or it'll be left as a hole for the dowel pin to engage in. So what I've got here is 
the clamp handle for the spot welder. And I want to show you the, the process that we use to create that as a pattern. So the first step is to create a new assembly. So in this assembly, which was empty, I've actually placed the clamp handle. And now I need to create a new part in that assembly and that will become the pattern. So if we go back to assembly, uh, we're going to create a uh, I'm going to create a part. So I'm just going to call this the um, lever pattern. No, I won't. I'm going to call it the lever pattern 2 because I've already created that part. And I'm going to create it on this plane. So the next step is to start a sketch. And I'm going to start it on the, the mid plane of the finished part. If you don't have a mid plane, you need to create one, but there was already one here because that's how I do my modeling. And I'm just going to rotate that round and I'm just going to get rid of the user planes because they tend to get in the way. There we go. So the next step is to uh, trace the outline of this part. So if we go back to the sketch section, I'm going to project the geometry of this part. And you just need to be a bit sure that you get it all. So this is just the, the very outline of the part. And the next step is to create an offset from that geometry. So this is where you have to make a bit of a value judgment about how much shrinkage you're likely to get in the casting when you create it. And also if you need any machining allowance, you need to sort of add that on. In this case, uh, there really is no machining allowance required. All I'm doing here is taking into account the, the shrinkage that I'm likely to get in the part. And also to create the allowance for the, the draft angle, which we'll do when we create the extrusion. So I'm going to make this about 1.5 millimeters bigger than the part. This excess you can file off or grind off, or in this case it really doesn't matter, you could leave it there. But the reality is that when you create a casting from a pattern like this, it's never going to be identical to the geometry that you created in the, the CAD package. If you want that, you really need to machine this on a CNC machine. Okay, so I've finished the sketch, and you'll notice that uh, don't bother about the, the drilled holes, that's going to be done later as a machining operation. So we finished the sketch, and now we're going to extrude that profile, and I need all of it, including the inside. Now I know that this finished part needs to be 20 millimeters thick, so when I create my extrusion, I want to go a little bit more than 20 millimeters total, once again to allow for uh, shrinkage, any cleanup, any, any machining that you might be likely to do. So I'm going to create this at 11 millimeters thick. Now, the next important part is to allow for the draft angle. Now, in Inventor, when you are doing your extrusion, if you go to this little tab called More, uh, it allows you to build in a taper angle. Now, the recommended taper for a draft on a pattern is two and a half degrees, so I'll stick with that. But it's actually a negative uh, draft we're going to do here. So minus two and a half, that makes sure that the edges slope inwards um, toward the top of the pattern. So if you're happy with that, let's click OK. And you can sort of, you can see there, I'll look at the end view, uh, you can see this draft angle, which is what we want here. Now, next step is to uh, fillet any sharp edges. Uh, when you're creating patterns with sand moulds, it's really important you don't have those sharp edges. It's just bad practice. It, it also gives um, a little bit more strength to the sand mould if you have fillets on all of these sharp edges. So I'm just going to create a fillet as a loop. Now, once again, you've got to make a value judgment here about how much fillet you want on this. Uh, I find that two millimeters is good uh, for what would normally be a sharp edge. If you really want this handle to have a, a nice three-dimensional form, um, you could create 
variable fillets, uh, say on the top edge where your hand is likely to rest, or underneath where you're going to grip it, uh, but in this case uh, I'll stick to millimetres. And there's our half pattern, and the next step is to create some holes for the, the pins that hold these parts together. So on this face I'm going to create a new sketch and I'm just going to create some points here. You want them to be distributed more or less in the center of the mass. So I'm going to put one here and one up here. Uh, in this case the exact position is not important. It's just as long as you have two holes to register the two halves of the the pattern together when they're done and with that I'm going to create a hole and I use six millimeter hardwood dowel for my pins some people use brass you know three millimeter brass it's it's up to you I just happen to have a supply of six millimeter dowel I'm going to make this uh, 6.5 though because um, the dowel diameter is a little bit variable and also the, the actual process of uh, 3D printing tends to make the holes a little bit undersized. So uh, in terms of depth, I've just got to make sure that I don't go right through. Uh, remember this pattern is going to be 11 millimeters thick, so I guess 8 millimeters is fine. And that is the finished model for the pattern. Uh, I would then create that as an STL file, take that into my um, 3D printer software and uh, I don't need to do a left and a right hand half, I can mirror that in my 3D printing software um, but if uh, for some reason you need to see both halves of the pattern or if the pattern's not symmetrical then you need to create the other side of the pattern. So if I go back now to my assembly, the important part now is to check to make sure that none of the part is protruding through the pattern. So you have a good look. Uh, sometimes I will make this part transparent. So I'll just see if I can find a transparent color. No, that's not it. Okay, that's better. So now when we return here, you're just sort of looking through that and you're making sure that the, the pattern completely covers the original part. And you get a sense there of how much material, how much extra cast material you're going to have when you create your finished part out of that. So this one's fairly straightforward. Here's one that um, I did for the side plate. And this one, a little bit more complicated, it has uh, these two features up here. In hindsight, I should have actually joined that together and made one part out of this, these two features here. As it turned out, when I extracted this from the sand mold, some of the sand broke away in the center section here. Just wasn't enough strength in it. Um, if we look at the, the actual pattern, um, you can see the initial extrusion just simply covers the part and then I've created separate extrusions for these two bosses here and then the rest of it is mainly fillets. Make sure you get plenty of uh, fillet radius on the corners and uh, I went back and created this sort of a, a socket in here or a, a, what would you call that, like a, a relief inside the part just to reduce the bulk of the casting and also to help with uh, shrinkage. So this also has the, uh, the correct angle which is two and a half degrees and once again a lot of it is just simply creating fillets to finish off. So once again, this would be exported as an STL, um, I would 3D print that and 
and the rest of it is just simply processing those printed parts uh, ready for creating the sand castings. So I'll get the 3D printer running and we'll just have a look at that process and we'll wrap it up there. While it's printing, I just sort of show you this one. This is the actual pattern that I used to cast the handle for the spot welder. It's been sitting for um, oh, four or five weeks, and you can see already that it's it's actually shrunk after it's been printed and after I've used it to make the casting. Um, in reality, when you put this in the sand mold, you ram the sand down. It tends to flex together anyway, so. If it's, a, if it's a real issue, you can uh, fill these areas here with uh, like a, a car body filler. I've had to do that at times when I want to resurrect one of these prints that have sort of shrunk badly. In fact, I don't know if you can see, but already this edge down here is lifting. Um, this, this is PLA. Uh, normally it prints very well, but it's very cold today and uh, I think the, the shrinkage is pulling it up off that blue tape. So, um, these can now be, when they're finished, they can be separated, uh, cleaned up around the edges. Um, the process for prepping them for actually using as a pattern is just to fill the texture left by the printing process. Um, and from there, it's straight onto the casting. Now, I'm not going to show that on camera. It, it's a very time-consuming process. And um, the next clips you see will be the, the finished castings. Thanks for watching.